Scalar theories of gravitation are field theories of gravitation in which the gravitational field is described using a scalar field, which is required to satisfy some field equation. Note, this article focuses on relativistic classical field theories of gravitation. The best known relativistic classical field theory of gravitation, general relativity, is a tensor theory, in which the gravitational interaction is described using a tensor field. Topic. Newtonian gravity The prototypical scalar theory of gravitation is Newtonian gravitation. In this theory, the gravitational interaction is completely described by the potential phi which is required to satisfy the Poisson equation with the mass density acting as the source of the field. To wit, Delta Phi equals four Pi G Rho Display style Delta Phi equals four Pi G Rho where G is the gravitational constant and Rho Display style Rho is the mass density this field theory formulation leads directly to the familiar law of universal gravitation f equals m 1 m 2 g r 2 display style f equals m underscore 1 m underscore 2 g r caret 2 Topic. Nordstrom's theories of gravitation The first attempts to present a relativistic classical field theory of gravitation were also scalar theories. Gunnar Nordstrom created two such theories. Nordstrom's first idea 1912 was to simply replace the divergence operator in the field equation of Newtonian gravity with the d'Alembertian operator. White medium square equals T two minus two Display style square equals partial underscore T carrot two nabla carrot two This gives the field equation white medium square phi equals four pi G rho Display style square phi equals four pi g rho. However, several theoretical difficulties with this theory quickly arose, and Nordstrom dropped it. A year later, Nordstrom tried again, presenting the field equation phi white medium square phi equals minus four pi g. T display style phi square phi equals minus four pi g t, where t display style t is the trace of the stress energy tensor. Solutions of Nordstrom's second theory are conformally flat Lorentzian spacetimes. That is, the metric tensor can be written as g mu nu equals a eta mu nu display style g underscore mu nu equals a eta underscore mu nu where m is the minkowski metric and a display style a is a scalar which is a function of position this suggestion signifies that the inertial mass should depend on the scalar field Nordstrom's second theory satisfies the weak equivalence principle. However, the theory fails to predict any deflection of light passing near a massive body contrary to observation. 
The theory predicts an anomalous perihelion precession of Mercury, but this disagrees in both sign and magnitude with the observed anomalous precession, the part which cannot be explained using Newtonian gravitation. Despite these disappointing results, Einstein's critiques of Nordstrom's second theory played an important role in his development of general relativity. Topic: <laughs> Einstein scalar theory. In 1913, Einstein erroneously concluded from his whole argument that general covariance was not viable. Inspired by Nordstrom's work, he proposed his own scalar theory. This theory employs a massless scalar field coupled to the stress-energy tensor, which is the sum of two terms. The first T G mu nu equals 1 4 pi g mu phi nu phi minus 1 2 eta mu nu lambda phi lambda phi Display style t underscore g carrot mu nu equals frac one four pi g left partial carrot mu phi partial carrot nu phi frac one two eta carrot mu nu partial underscore lambda phi partial carrot lambda phi right represents the stress momentum energy of the scalar field itself. The second represents the stress momentum energy of any matter which may be present. T M mu nu equals rho phi u mu u nu display style t underscore m caret mu nu equals rho phi u caret mu u caret nu where u mu Display style u caret mu is the velocity vector of an observer, or tangent vector to the world line of the observer. Einstein made no attempt, in this theory, to take account of possible gravitational effects of the field energy of the electromagnetic field. Unfortunately, this theory is not diffeomorphism covariant. This is an important consistency condition, so Einstein dropped this theory in late 1914. Associating the scalar field with the metric leads to Einstein's later conclusions that the theory of gravitation he sought could not be a scalar theory. Indeed, the theory he finally arrived at in 1915, general relativity, is a tensor theory, not a scalar theory, with a two-tensor, the metric, as the potential. Unlike his 1913 scalar theory, it is generally covariant, and it does take into account the field energy momentum stress of the electromagnetic field or any other non-gravitational field. Topic: <laughs> Additional variations. Kaluza-Klein theory involves the use of a scalar gravitational field in addition to the electromagnetic field potential a mu display style a caret mu in an attempt to create a five-dimensional unification of gravity and electromagnetism. Its generalization with a fifth variable component of the metric that leads to a variable gravitational constant was first given by Pascal Jordan. Brand's Dick theory is a scalar tensor theory, not a scalar theory, meaning that it represents the gravitational interaction using both a scalar field and a tensor field. We mention it here because one of the field equations of this theory involves only the scalar field and the trace of the stress-energy tensor, as in Nordstrom's theory. Moreover, the Brand's Dick theory is equal to the independently derived theory of Jordan, hence it is often referred to as the Jordan Brand's Dick or JBD theory. The Brand's Dick theory couples a scalar field with the curvature of spacetime and is self consistent, and, assuming appropriate values for a tunable constant, this theory has not been ruled out by observation. 
The Brands Dick theory is generally regarded as a leading competitor of general relativity, which is a pure tensor theory. However, the Brands Dick theory seems to need too high a parameter, which favors general relativity. Z combined the idea of the BD theory with the Higgs mechanism of symmetry breakdown for mass generation, which led to a scalar tensor theory with Higgs field as scalar field, in which the scalar field is massive, short ranged. An example of this theory was proposed by H. Denon and H. Fromm at 1991, parting from the nature of Higgs field interacting gravitational and Yukawa long ranged like with the particles that get mass through it. The Watt-Misner theory 1999 is a recent example of a scalar theory of gravitation. It is not intended as a viable theory of gravitation since, as Watt and Misner point out, it is not consistent with observation, but as a toy theory which can be useful in testing numerical relativity schemes. It also has pedagogical value. See also Nordstrom's theory of gravitation <laughs>